the wonderful or unfortunate thing about enforcement is, is that, um, you know, there, there's a guideline, but it, it can range, it can range incredibly. So what I'm trying to do is, as, as, as James said, is give you a high level in terms of where we roughly think things are going to go. But, you know, I want to stress that, um, you know, this can change a lot. And, and when I say this can change a lot, um, the courts, when we start enforcement, um, we are required to go to different courts depending on different regions. I, you know, no, no exaggeration. There are some times I can send a document to one court and get that document back in two to three days. And I send it to another court and it's four to six weeks or longer. Um, the fact is, is that we're at their mercy. So as much as we, what we can try and do is we try and send off documents from our end for the next stage to do all we can do. So let's say we get back, um, uh, you know, we complete the notice of sale and I'll get through this process that we complete the notice of sale. What, what, what our goal is to do is to move to the next stage and file the next document with as little delay as possible, because all we can do is get the documents to the next stage as fast as possible. And then we are at the mercy of the powers that be in terms of when they want to open that file and look at it. Um, we sometimes uh, write to them and they don't reply to us for weeks. Uh, you know, sometimes they will uh, finally look at signing after six weeks and return it because they want one word change. Sometimes they've returned it and they're quite frankly wrong. And then we refile it and then they acknowledge their mistake. So, you know, that's life and this is what we have to deal with. There's no way around it. Um, so, you know, what, what I can what I can say to you is, is that we do move these forward as fast as possible. Um, well, you know, I have seen, you know, if, if we're taking that the idea of going through a full enforcement file and, and we, you know, I will explain to where some of these pay out as part of this, but if we're saying a full enforcement file, and I do estimate this sort of being a six to eight month process, if not longer, that this is on the idea of if you have to complete a full enforcement file in order to sell the property to realize on the investment. Um, obviously, there are there are going to, this isn't going to be on all files, and hopefully this is on very few files, but this is sort of the, um, you know, I don't really know, worst case scenario in terms of time, not worst case scenario in terms of result, to be clear, in terms of time. Um, just because it takes longer doesn't mean that, um, you know, there's an inherent, you know, that you're not going to get your money back. It's, 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 it takes longer. It's just that we have to go through that process and we have to give the people their, their day in court and their time. So with that, I'll just go through it, as, as, as I said, sort of fairly quick. But where we come in is we come in on the statement of claim. So that's our actual action. That's the court action to bring, uh, you know, uh, to bring against the borrowers. And what we have to do is we now do that electronically. So when we get that done in the, next, in the first couple of days after receiving the file from Hosper, um, oh, there we go. Um, we will um, prepare that. My, my, my staff will prepare that. I'll review it. And one of the few benefits of the pandemic is actually the legal system has uh, somewhat gotten caught up with technology. And we can finally now file things online. So what we do now is we can go from the uh, having it in one or two days, we can then go file electronically. We get that back almost instantaneously, and then we give it to our process server. So this is sort of the first at mercy stage. Our process server is going to go and try and serve those documents, uh, you know, just like we see in the movies, you know, somebody's going to the court, the door and sort of says, you know, not, you know, they don't say you've been served, but that sort of idea. Um, well, some people accept it and they just accept their fate. Um, sometimes it's the process server standing at the door being like, I've knocked three times. I can see people moving around inside. Dogs are barking, but nobody's answering the door. Um, there are people who know that they have creditors and they know how to respond to their creditors, unfortunately. Um, so while we hope for the best, and generally it's in one or two days that we can generally get a process server out there. And again, serving in Toronto might be different than when I have somebody going up to serve in you know, a more remote region, they can only go at certain times. So that's sort of one of those caveats. Most of them get served within uh, say three to five days after that um, in the odd case. And, and you know they will go longer where we have to bring court motions to do that. But I, I'm gonna leave that until uh, maybe we do a more in-depth one. So let's say we serve in the normal three to 10 days on the defendant. The next stage we're doing is the notice of sale. And, and so without getting too intricate, this is really a two-sided a two stage because what we're doing in the enforcement process is we're doing the full enforcement process in the courts, which gives you a, a judgment, but more importantly, gets to us a point where we can get, say to a sheriff, hey, please evict these people from their home. They've not paid us after all of this time. 
That is separate from the notice of sale, which is this next stage, which is your right to sell the property based on the default. And what we do and why we do this now is because they both have sort of um, periods where a borrower can deal with their, their default. So uh, uh, when you file a statement of claim, a borrower has at law 20 days to file a defense. And if they file a notice of intent to defend, they get an extra 10 days. So at minimum, we're stuck for 30 days there. On a notice of sale, we have a redemption period of 38 days where we have to allow them time to address their default. So what we do is we issue both of those at the same time so they run concurrently rather than having a 30 day and then a 38 day, which would only bring it there. So the notice of sale, when we get to it, it's simply something we prepare and we send up by registered mail. There's no need for process servers or anything like that. Actually, there's no need for process servers after the original claim is issued. And once that expires, we normally, so that's where I say five to six weeks, 38 days, we can then file for a default judgment in the vast majority of cases where, um, where a defense hasn't been filed. I'm not going to deal with the, the defense is filed as a delay tactic because again, um, I, I want to go, that's going to be in more detail, but the vast majority, 80% plus, maybe 90% plus are not defended. We file a, a, um, a motion for default judgment. So this is one of those first stages where a certain courthouse I know, I will often get this back in two or three days, the Toronto courthouse, if I get it back in six weeks, I'm counting myself lucky. So you can see now where we've just got a range of, of time. Um, once we get the default judgment, we now have, what you know, for, la uh, for the best words, it's crystallized the debt. There's now a debt they owed and we can go on, you know, to towards the, the, the possession um, while we're still working on sorting things out. When we have that, we again have one of these sort of statutory provisions where we then have to, we file our writ so that we have the judgment, but we then do another formal demand where we have to wait another 10 days to let it says, please give us possession. Um, to, to be clear about all these stages where we're saying we demand possession, we want possession, all this, I've had one person ever say, okay, your documents say that you demand possession, I'm gonna hand it over to you now. Um, people wait until the sheriff's at the door and I don't expect anything otherwise. Um, so while we have these formalities, it's, it's just there. So this 10 days, the notice demanding possession, we're gonna go, um, then we'll go to our next stage. And that's our motion, another order, similar to the de default judgment, where we're gonna to say to the courts, okay, here's all this evidence that he lives there, we need you to, or he or she or, or they, um, we need you to prepare for the, uh, grant us an order for possession. So same as the other one. Sometimes I get it back in two to three days. Sometimes I get it back to four to six weeks. So you can see here, now we've all of a sudden got potentially an eight to 10, eight to 12 week swing, depending on what courthouse we're using. Um, the next stage, again, number nine, we'll gloss over it a bit. We actually have to go back to the court after we get an order from a judge to go to the registrar to file a second order. I have still to this day um, been unable to figure out why we have to do this, but that's the court requirements and we smile and we do it. So getting to the end here, we've now gone through all of the, the court stages. Once we've gone through all the court stages, we go to the sheriff and we provide the, the proof that we've got an order for possession from the sheriff, uh, to, to the sheriff from the registrar. Um, and then we request that they um, arrange for um, the eviction. So what the sheriff is going to do, again, sometimes they're faster, sometimes they're slower, but I would, you know, say, you know, the four week range. The sheriff goes out to the property about a week before closing or a week before the eviction date, and they post to the door that we will be evicting you on this date, we being the sheriff, um, and that to please vacate. And if you do not vacate, you will be forcibly removed on that date. Um, again, nobody really vacates prior to that. So what happens is the sheriff will come to that door on that scheduled date. We will send out our property manager, the sheriff will ensure that the property is vacated and then we change the keys and we've now got possession of the property. And from there, we are going to sell the property. So the sale of that property for the most part is gonna file follow the normal stages of a selling of a home for all of, for all of you who've done that um, with you know potentially some staging, potentially some fix ups depending on the status of the property. But we've gotta go through that whole listing process, get it ready to list, get it ready to go on MLS, then we got to take the offers, attempt to get fair market value, and then depending on when we've negotiated a closing date, most sales you see generally are 30 to 60 days. So right there from possession from the sheriff to getting the property ready for sale to closing can easily be three months there. So 
completed the process. We've completed the process. That could be eight to 12 months. But this is where it's important that I want to bring in that historically, and I do think that things are going to change now, and, and, and James, and I think all of you can probably appreciate this, there was, where when we've seen a declining market, um, there is a slight change in the exit strategy for a borrower, where there might have been more equity or you know, constantly increasing prices, it was a lot easier for a borrower in earlier stages to refinance their property and get out of it. So while we have lower loan to value properties, this should still be the case in the vast majority of situations. And in the, if that's the case, we see, we have historically seen the vast majority of, uh, of mortgages paid out prior to the end of the notice of sale. So that's generally within about 45 days. But if they are not able to at that stage and if there's gonna have a harder time to refinance and or not able to refinance at all, this is where we're gonna have to sort of go all the way to the sale to realize on that because we have to go, you know, sort of that balance of not enough, you know, lenders out there as James sort of talked about people scaling back to do that, but still being enough equity in the property to realize on the debt from us. And it's an unfortunate, you know, byproduct of the investing that we do and in the, the type of things we do where we, we, we have to do it in these situations. But um, just because we go there, that doesn't, and, and somebody wasn't able to refinance, that doesn't mean there's equity because it's that sort of range of that 80% where it's hard to find an investor, but there's still another 15% equity in the home for you to realize on your debt, even in a falling market. It's not a guarantee of anything. Just because we sell the home, there can still be situations of losses or other situations. But these are things that, again, this is the, the sort of the general overview. Um, I think, James, another time we'll, we'll get into these sort of things and more specific strategies on how to resolve potential losses. More important than the legal process is understanding the strategies and tactics that we use at each of these stages and, and understanding the difference between, you know, starting an issue, a statement of claim versus actually getting to the eviction stage. Um, and, and to your point, Jeremy, you know, his, historically, if we look just historically, 90% um, of the time that we start, 90% or more of the time in the past that we've started a statement of claim, we were able to resolve it before getting to the eviction stage. Um, to, to, to Jeremy's point, which was well made, is that we don't know what, what the market's going to be like going forward, right? Because the market does drive a lot of our exit strategies. Um, but but if I speak historically, you know, all the way through from starting this process, all the way up into the day of eviction, um, we're willing to entertain other solutions for the board. We're willing to allow them to provide a you know, a, a proof of sale that they've arranged with their own realtor. We're, we're willing to accommodate, um, you know, a, a partial pay down of our mortgage or a payout of our mortgage, potentially work on a refinance. So starting this process um, is certainly not the desired outcome. It's, it's what we basically, it's, it's a step that we feel we must take um, when we're, when we're sort of put in a position where we feel like not starting this process would you know, not be the prudent thing to do to protect your investment. Um, so we're there, we're there trying to balance, you know, having compassion for the borrower and trying to, to work out a solution that, that is in the mutual best interest of the borrower as well as the investor, but also understanding that at the end of the day, our fiduciary duty is to you and to the shareholders of the MIC and that sometimes like a bank, you know, if, if a client's in default, we're going to have to take steps to remedy that default uh, or to exit that mortgage.